We are called to worship by these words from the psalmist. O sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord and bless his name. Tell him of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations and his marvelous works among all people. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Let us stand as we join together in singing our opening hymn. You'll find it in the Renew Song book, number 47. Please stand. is the liturgy for creation on page 26. We will be singing all parts. God of the sparrow, God
praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights above. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Praise the Lord from the earth, you great sea creatures and all ocean depths, lightning and hail, snow and clouds, stormy winds that do his bidding. Let them Princes and rulers, men and women, old and young together. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget none of his benefits. We have one who speaks to the Father in our defense. Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just, and will forgive us our sins, and purify us from all unrighteousness. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart, in full assurance of faith, and confess our sins. Please be seated. Have mercy, O God, according to your unfailing love. Wash away all our iniquities and cleanse us from our sins. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. In praise of our Creator, let us affirm our faith. Please stand. I believe in the one true God, the Father of humanity, who creates and sustains the universe in wisdom and power, who calls us into being and into relationship with God by grace, whose nature is love. I believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who lives. Who rose again that we might experience the life of God, who 
We offer thanks to you, Creator God, for your artistry in frost and snow, in the icy stillness of winter, and for new life bursting forth in blooming and spring. Thank you for the seasons of the Spirit, for joy and sorrow, for pleasure and pain, for gladness and grief, for friendship and solitude. We are grateful to you for your presence in all We pray for those who, because of greed or selfishness, exploit the gifts of the earth, that they may learn to be careful stewards of your creation. We pray for those who suffer from prejudice, poverty, or pain, that you would draw near to them and provide for them to true justice and mercy. We pray for those whose lives are being wasted in the errors of living and despair, that they may find the joy of self-discipline and the hope that comes through Christ. We pray for your whole church that it may become a powerful agent of reconciliation and renewal in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for all people, that everyone will recognize your awesome majesty and bow in At this time, I'd like to invite our young people to come up and join me. You all need to come in close. So I was feeling today like, like we ought to put together a band. What do you think? You guys in? You up for this? Okay. So I'm going to pass out some instruments. Oh, oh, oh sorry. That went to you. And it gets, uh, what do these do? Anybody know? Okay, you got that. So bells. Anybody want bells? Pass along some bells. Got to make sure everybody gets something. A bell ringer. You want a bell? Oh, you want a ring? Oh, okay. That's all right. Let's see. What else we got? Uh, more bell. Oh, what does that do? I don't even want to know. Okay. Somebody get that. Come on. Anyone? Anyone? Come on. Okay, that works. That's good. Uh, oh, spoons. Anyone do it? Come on. Somebody do that. Somebody do that. Somebody needs to do the symbols. You want the symbols? All right. Oh, you want more symbols? I don't know how many symbols are good. Uh, here, got more bells. There's a big one. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, you're putting it back in? Okay, more shaky things. All right. Oh, good. All right. Does everybody have something that wants one? Oh, you want that? Here. Okay. Oh, we still got to get more. Another shaky thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, hold on. Oh, 
Here's that sand sand block. Somebody want a sand block? Okay, well that's good. Okay, so here we go. We're all together as a band. So let's do something we all know. Um, how about um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star? You guys ready? <clears throat> all right, here we go. I got to get something too. All right. And everybody knows how it goes. Twinkle, twinkle, little. Okay, so here we go. I'll, I'll be the vocalist for the band and you guys accompany. Here we go. Ready? Ready? Twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high. Like a diamond in the sky. Put up before we do any more damage. And right now, I think my hearing is gone for the rest of the day. So, think. Do you think we probably would have been better if we'd practiced? No. No? I think we probably would have been better if we practiced. The other thing is it might have helped us that you actually had a musician leading you, like if Peggy would have been leading you or Miss Kim or somebody who actually could read music was helping. There, that might have helped, don't you think? Huh? Yeah. All right. Well, our lesson in Scripture today talks about how we need to live in harmony. Now, harmony is that you just don't go making your own noise, but you try to blend in with others. You try to get along with others so that you come together and you make beautiful music together. Now, that was certainly a joyful noise, and I hope the congregation enjoyed it. Um, you always remember, that was the, the thing you always, when you guys are really little, the relative that brings you some loud thing is the relative that you want to get, you know, because they're like, they always bring something loud for you to play when you're tiny. But, but anyhow, we, we try, but, but the thing is, is that our goal as people of faith is to be in harmony with each other and with other people. So that takes a little work. That means that it's just not about us banging our own drum or jingling our own bell, but it's about doing it in time with others so we can make something beautiful together. So remember that, and next time maybe we'll practice and see if we can get any better, all right? Thanks for coming up. It was good seeing all of you today. Well, as we all try to pull together in harmony, one of the ways that we do that is through our support of God's work in the community, and we do that through our gifts. I invite our ushers to wait upon us.
God of grace and love, we give you thanks for the blessings that we have in our lives. Lord, in the midst of all that happens, we are grateful that we have a God who we can come to, who loves us, and who listens to our prayers. We remember before you this day Paul Dillman as he continues to recover. We lift up Karen Seiler as she's receiving treatments. Lord, we also pray for Anna stover Keneally who is recovering from surgery. Lord, we pray that you'll give safe travel to all of our our loved ones who are down at Mount Morris this week, grateful for the opportunity for them to be in fellowship this weekend. Lord, for the concerns that are not spoken, those burdens that we carry in our hearts, we know that you hear our prayers and that you seek to comfort us. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Scripture reading this morning is from 1 Peter 3, 8 through 15. Finally, all of you, live in harmony with one another, be sympathetic, love as brothers, be compassionate and humble. Do not repay evil with evil or insult with insult, but with blessing, because to this you were called so that you may inherit a blessing. For whoever would love life and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from deceitful speech. He must turn from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are attentive to their prayer. But the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Who's going to harm you if you are eager to do good? But even if you should suffer for what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear. Do not be frightened. But in your heart set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. If you notice that uh, 
Grandma and Grandpa Van Bramer are beaming a little bit. It's because their grandson Matthew, our Matthew, uh, was crowned prom king last night in Sturgeon Bay. So we're very, very proud. And uh, as we are for all of our young people, I believe Sylvie Hauser from our church was also on court. And, and I'm not sure, there may have been some of our young people up at Gibraltar as well, but, but uh, I haven't got the results from that. Stay tuned. I was invited this week to lead a uh, Protestant prayer service for the students down at St. Norbert. Um, as many of you know, I've had a long-term relationship uh, down there as an assistant instructor and through the boys being there for school. And so the campus ministry folks there were starting to be a little bit concerned because they realized they have a great number of Protestant young people there and they thought it'd be nice to try to offer a worship experience that would be more similar to their own traditions. So I was one of the uh, guinea pigs, the uh, one of the three pastors that they offered to uh, have come in and, and offer one of these new worship experiences. So I went down on Thursday, and I uh, have to say, we were a tiny group. There were the two uh, ministry coordinators. They were there. They had their pianist there. There were two Lutherans and three Moravians. Two Sturgeon Bay Moravians and one Lake Mills Moravian. So it wasn't a very large group, but I have to tell you, my anxiety about doing the service immediately went down because where there are four Moravians, you know there will be singing. And that's always the worst thing about doing something like that. You never know whether or not anybody's going to sing. And I looked at those young people there, those three young people, and I said, we're fine, we're fine. And we did. Uh, we sang As the Deer and Lamb of God. Uh, I don't think any of the others there knew the songs or the melodies, but we were strong enough to carry the melody. Well, one of the problems from going out, out of a church like ours is that we are conditioned to want more than the melody. That's one thing about being a member of this congregation. When I go somewhere else, I don't want just the melody. I want harmony. You want harmony. I wish you could have been uh, here this winter. Uh, I sat in this sanctuary, and I think I've mentioned this before. There were about 28 high school and college students from the Greater Moravian Church that had come for a retreat on that weekend. And I can't tell you what it was like sitting in this sanctuary as they began to sing because they were not just loud and they weren't just full of energy but you could hear those harmonies all brought together in this incredible space and it was absolutely wonderful once you experience harmony in life you you don't want to settle for just melody um, as hard as the kids tried this morning Let's face it, it takes a little work to get all that to come together. And, you know, I'm not just talking about carrying a tune here, but, but when you experience harmony in many things in life, it, when you experience harmony in fellowship, when you experience harmony in, in mission, when you experience harmony in working together with others, that's a very special experience. And in our lesson today, we are called by Peter to live in harmony with one another to seek that synergy that takes place only when, when people come together. It's not something that we can achieve on our own. It only comes from our bringing our part and sharing it, sharing it in sympathy and cooperation with others. The thing about creating harmony is that there has to be others there to blend. You can have all kinds of noise, but you've got to have that noise blending with other noise. You can't harmonize with empty space or sealed lips. We cannot experience that transformative collaboration when there are folks with folded arms and critical attitudes or holding back. Peter gives us a list in this passage about virtues that help us create harmony. Just as a choir or a band must learn to blend their vo voices or their instruments together with one another, so we as followers of Christ we need to blend our gifts and our perspectives. These virtues suggest that to make this happen, we need to possess sympathy, love, compassion, and humility. Over the years, it has been interesting to note um, with our young people that uh, as they begin off, particularly in their discipleship class, one of the things that's always challenging is to find that harmony, bringing them together as a group. In discipleship class, we have tons of enthusiasm, 
but very little restraint. Now, I shouldn't complain about this. Most people who are instructing young people in religious matters would be thrilled to face the problem that I face every year. I am constantly having to say to three or four students at a time, please put your hand down. Put your hand down. Just, just listen for a minute. How awesome is that, that there's all that desire to jump in, but, but part of what needs to happen with us as a group is that blessing that comes when, the, though everyone wants to give voice, we need to learn how to do it together. And so the challenge to learn is to learn that sympathy with one another, that love for one another, that compassion to hear what another person has to share, and the humility that I can wait my turn and I don't have to have my arm up all the time. And that is more than just our spouting out our opinions. It's about us growing together in love. You know, we don't have too many models of that around us in our world. If you think about it, we live in a world that worships the virtuoso. What's interesting, I'm talking to you about virtues. Well, that word virtuoso comes from the Latin, which means someone who's extremely talented, extremely gifted, possessing all these virtues. And what we tend to do in our society and cultures, that's what we're interested. So we worship athletes or musicians or entrepreneurs who achieve great success because they are exceptional. We don't do a lot in raising up those who work well with others, who, uh, who stay behind and clean up the stuff out of the sandbox, who, who participate in that way. We have to dig deeper to find those who excel at harmony. You know, that's one of the things in coaching over the years that's become very precious to me. It's wonderful to have those individually talented athletes, but the one thing that I've come to appreciate so much are those young people who come out and are interested in what happens to us as a group. That's a gift. That's a gift given to their team. You know, just recently, um, this past week, it's interesting, as I was preparing for this, I, I realized that we do have a few examples of this, though. This past week in Sturgeon Bay, we had the Golden Heart Banquet that the Volunteer Center puts on. And what is such a tremendous thing about that gathering of people, it's to honor and recognize folks who do play for a team, who, who volunteer, people who try to live sympathy and love and compassion and humility while working with others for the greater good in our community. We need more things like that to lift those virtues up. Friends, as Christians, we're called to be harmony makers in fact, we are told to do this even when we may experience evil and insults from others. We are to not react and repay, but we are to seek peace and we are to pursue it. Frederick Beekner writes about the church as having two qualities. He says, you know, there's the visible church that most people think about. That's the place where people get together like we're doing this morning on a regular basis in the name of God. But there is also an invisible church, and that's the church that lives outside the walls of this sanctuary. That is where people that follow God are willing to be his hands and feet in the world. We need to make harmony together when we gather in his name. And sometimes that by itself can be a big challenge. Because if we cannot do it here, then we will surely struggle to be harmonizers in other places. Out there, where it's really, really important. Peter points out that it's not good enough just to do good things. It's not good enough just not to strike back at those who treat you wrong. But he adds that you need to be in seeking to be a force of harmony Always be prepared, he says in our lesson, to give the reason for the hope you have. Always be prepared. If people notice this fact that you are a person who tries hard to work with others, you also need to have, be ready to give a reason for that. Our harmony has a purpose. It can be used to introduce to anyone the author of the music of life and eternity. We need to be prepared to tell people why we volunteer for Habitat and build homes, why we may give of our time serving at loaves and fishes, why we are patient with people when others who give up and throw their hands in the air and move on. We need to be willing 
to explain to people why we continue, why we don't give up, even when the road gets rough. You see, the practices of virtues, friends, are not for our personal glory. They're for his. They are a reflection of his grace inside of us. Amen. I invite us to stand and turn in a new songbook for our closing hymn. Number 151, Be Thou My Vision. Please stand. And now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you both now and forever. Amen.